Hey, on this episode of Custom Built Junkers, look, I got t-shirts now. Um, well, okay, I lied. I got two t-shirts because I wanted to see how they would come out first. I'm working on my buddy's 96 F-150. It's got the 302. It's been sitting for like four years at his dad's place. Um, we got it over here. He wants me to do the uh, water pump, the fan assembly, the radiator, an oil change, a tune-up. Um, all that good stuff under here and then he's got something going on in the rear end I think it's opinion bearing is, is going crazy um, I took it across the street to my buddy's house uh, he's got a lift we got it up there the other night to kind of look at it beforehand so I know what to order and um, that thing is not great so let's get started so first things first what I'm going to do is get all this stuff off I don't know if this is the right stuff to use but it's one I'm gonna use. Um, you can probably hear it in my voice too. Uh, getting over a pretty gnarly uh, little upper respiratory thing I got going on. Um, it may or may not be the thing that's going around with the dogs. But, you know, it is what it is. I can't get this off. Okay, so um, I've checked some stuff out on this truck. Um, to kind of give him a list of everything that he's going to need to get over to me and uh for being what it is it's not in bad shape so that's that's a plus um we were thinking it was going to be a lot worse off than it was sitting for as long as it was um but it's looking pretty good so other than doing that rear end all the other stuff is just pretty basic you know just changing a bunch of stuff out why is this not coming out what are you doing? Let's go. Like right there. Come on, bitch. Yeah. I'm try this one that way too. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, this should just come out. What the hell? I'm gonna have to go buy more of these. Ow. Um so in this radiator that he got. Pretty sure he got, he went from like a single row radiator in here to, uh, I think it's a triple row. I haven't opened the box, but the box is huge. So that's what I'm fully expecting it to be. Um, and I know we're gonna make a mess and I don't have any buckets for catching oil or water or anything like that. So this will be interesting. Get out of the way. Okay, I'm gonna put that there. I got a fly in my gear. Shoe fly. Don't bother me. Okay, put that there. Let me get some clamps. And here comes the kid. And he's gonna say, he's gonna walk in and ask me to do some stuff I don't want to do. You watch. I'll give you the look. fully prepared to not make a mess there because it is low on uh, coolant but I'm gonna just stuff this guy here until we can get this shroud off of here which looks like eight millimeters so let's get that and I've been doing some stuff again stuff in here sporadically so all my stuff is kind of skewed about um, just fine So this is Thanksgiving week, so we got some time off. Time off from work. And like I said, I've been battling this, whatever the hell I got going on over here. Uh, and now I think my wife's getting it, so it's gonna be a... It's 
It's going to be a thankful Thanksgiving. I'll tell you that. All right, so shroud. Okay. Shroud. How are we going to... I don't want to take that off here. That's going to make a mess. fan too. Somewhat protected here. I had a cool little magnetic flashlight. I worked on my wife's car. I don't know where it is. I probably left it magnetized under there and drove off with it. Put that guy in here so we can see. See what we're doing. This guy in here so we don't lose it. the horn, Tony. This thing was sitting in a field for like four years. It's got all kinds of critters in it. So, if you see me freak out momentarily, just know that's what it is.
So part of what he wants me to replace is this clutch assembly because uh, it looks like the spring is broke so it hasn't been engaging so it's just been spinning so we're going to replace that form there we have it in the truck cool so there's one one thing but while we're here I believe he also gave me a belt so let's go ahead and take this guy off fly don't bother me Belt, trash pulley also trash okay the water pump looks like it's gonna be a sum of a bitch <sighs> I take all that shit off And I do know that this lower radiator hose is trashed. It is hard as a rock. Let's go squeeze it. You felt the crunchiness in there and everything. So I know that's going to have some good stuff when we pop it here in a minute. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to work on these transmission lines. No, I don't need to take that off. There's your petcock for draining. We're not going to do that. Okay, so that one's good. I do have to take these lines off, though. I wonder if it comes with a fitting. Let me figure out what I'm going to do here. I'm about to make a mess. A big old mess. Let's see. Send it. as empty as they come that's great okay so let me get some wrenches some line wrenches we'll work on these this guy this guy now just word of the wise just word of the wise if you're working on lines like these transmission lines here where you got an actual steel line or aluminum line going and it's got the it's got the compression fitting on the back end of it you do want to get you some of these line wrenches that fully encapsulate minus one little area here um, if not you could run into some issues where um, you're gonna end up rounding off the the bolt or you'll compress you'll compress the line trying to trying to tweak it over so you want to get you some get you some of those and they're pretty cheap uh, I've had these forever I think this is probably like the third time I've ever used them but you know when you need them you need them so Transmission lines are going to leak. Let's move this over. Hmm. There ain't nothing in there, too. Weird. Also, if you're working on these and you're going to put your radiator back in or whatever, you don't want to crush the fins like I just did over here. 
But this one's not getting reused, so we don't care. Yeah. I'm gonna have to figure this out. You get out of here. Get out of the way. Jesus crazy. There ain't a whole lot of anything in this engine. No transmission for there. Yeah, nothing that came rushing out. Now we are gonna make a mess. I can't wait. Okay. First, I'm gonna get rid of this. Come on, man. This drink is so grody. She don't want to work. Bless. Okay, fine, you can stay. Jeez. I gotta figure this out. Why? There. Now that that's out of the way. When I get this lower radiator hose off, I want y'all to. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to squeeze it for you so you can hear how crunchy this thing is because it's uh, it's pretty bad shape. I felt on it the other night, like I said, when I was putting a list together for my buddy for all the parts he needs, and uh, hard as a rock. And you start squeezing on it, it starts crunching and doing all kinds of stuff. Sound like my back in the morning. Holy, come on. You love me? God, dog almighty. Because I got this line in the way and I don't want to take it off because I don't need to. There we go. Ow. Okay, so I'm about to pop this lower radiator hose off. I got the clamps loosened up. Gonna get my boots soaked. You know how it goes. Okay, here we go. Come. Come. Here we go. Here we go. Here. Yep, here we go. There's a little bit of juice in there. Not the color you want it to be. There we go. Yikes. That's like that's like the color of the Grinch. It's like green, but not a good green. It's like greenish brown. Not a good looking color. So let me see if I can get this hose off of here. I might just cut this one. Right. I'm getting rid of the stupid thing anyway. Get a new hose. That thing is on there. Like, real good. Holy smokes. Get a new one anyway. Who cares? Okay, so that's drained. That's undone. Let's get this radiator out of here. 
then because I got dogs that like to mess with stuff that's not theirs, I'm gonna go flush this out. It's not just sitting here for them to drink it. Okay, let me show you. So this is what came out. See how little bitty, it's so baby. That's what's coming out. This big old thick thing. That's what's going in. So I got to plumb up the fittings. It came with new fittings, so I put those in there. And then I'm actually gonna leave this out because I'm gonna need some room to get that water pump out. So it looks like I gotta take off everything to get to it which is fun to take off the hair compressor oh so i'm gonna wrestle with that first so i can get that done and also while i have ample room i'm gonna go ahead and start messing with all the other stuff to for the tune-up so i took the civil liberty that's that's a cobweb that's cool i took the civil liberty of going ahead and starting to unbolt the water pump on this thing and uh, Ford in their infinite wisdom decided that the bracket that holds the power steering pump and the AC compressor needs to be removed to get the water pump off so that's fun uh, so I'm currently on the last bolt to get this thing off of here I had to cut one of the hoses one of the heater hoses well it's a hose that goes from the, the bypass from the thermostat back to the water pump and uh, I had to cut that one because I got to get a new one anyway. That one's all exploded. But I'm getting this last bolt off, and this one is going to be gross. Several of the bolts that I've already pulled off, <clears throat> they uh, they got quite a bit of rust and build up on them, uh, which was not encouraging because that means I'm going to have to clean them up and put some kind of thread sealer on them so they. Uh, so I don't leak once I get all this filled up and back and running and all that stuff. So it's just about to pop out now. And then I got one hose and I can't get the clamp moved off of it far enough. So I'll pull that once I get the pump out. And I could clean up the surface and put the new one on. And then that's done. Ah, dog mighty. I think it's out. Sure. And the one thing I did see, because I don't work on Fords, man. Chevy's my my wheelhouse, Chevy and Dodge. That's my my stuff right there. But I did see on a couple forums with these Ford water pumps on these 302s. I don't know if it's the same with all the rest of them. But uh, these bolts can break inside the inside the timing cover and that happens and you got to do a whole bunch of other stuff i don't want to do so hopefully we're getting this nice and easy oh, son of a stuff there's a pigtail in the way neat so I'm gonna have to cut another line that's fine because I can't get that one off I can't get this out I don't know how I'm gonna get it out of this pump and put it in a new one Huh. 
Another one hits the deck. I think that goes to that, but I'm afraid to undo it because it looks like I'm going to break it if I try. We're going to try. Oh, the smokes. I got it pushed in. I can't even get it to rock off. Oh, because there's a thing right there. It won't let me. Come on. Are you kidding me? Maybe if I can get this stupid thing out of the way, it'll let me see what I'm working with here. That guy is in there. I don't know how I'm gonna get it out. And this guy is on there. I guarantee you this is the original water pump. Because this ain't doing nothing. dirty in here too so that's good I clean all that up oh this water pump was definitely leaking all right start scraping it let me see a man about a horse
just like that. That's a little trick I learned from working on old school Chevys with my dad. Paint remover wheel to get everything off. So now we got to figure out how to get that guy out. Because he, he's in there. Let me see if we can bust it loose. This guy. We'll go hit the hell out of it with a hammer. Only messed a, a couple of the threads up, it'll be fine. I gotta clean them up anyway, so I'll chase them with a I'll chase them with a, a die. See if I can get it cleaned up a little bit more. Alright, so that's what I need to do next. I need to get the wire wheel out and I need to clean all of these bolts. So I've done all that I can do for the night. Um, I'm having a hell of a time getting the plugs out on the Passenger side there, it's it's real tight. But these these plugs are all on the driver's side and they're fouled. They're fouled pretty pretty bad. Uh, looks like he had iridiums in there, but we're putting coppers back in. Uh, these older 302s, man, they're like the older EFI sort of engines or whatever. You could put iridiums in them. They were really made for that. You know what I mean? So. Um, I kind of did the same thing in the dually. I put iridiums in my dually and it ran worse, so I put coppers back in it and it's it's fine. So we're gonna put coppers back in this one. Um, all those parts should be getting here uh, Friday, uh, a couple days from now, it's Wednesday. So um, tomorrow morning, uh, before tomorrow's Thanksgiving, for uh, time's sake, I guess. Uh, tomorrow morning before we get ready to go, I'm gonna come out here and I'm gonna drain the oil. And get the filter off. I need to get a bucket for this cool oil mix that I have right here. I need to dump this one out. It's going to be way too much. Um, so I'll come out here. I'll drain the oil, uh, get that ready to go, and I'm just waiting on parts. At that point, um, I'll figure out how to get to the other side. I think there's an air pump over there or something. I don't know. I'll take it off. You don't need that. Um, so. I think I've about hit the limit tonight, but the uh, the water pump is ready to go in. I did have a little issue. Let me show you. So the last bolt to come out is this bolt here. It's more like a guide pin, really. So there's no threads on this part here, but the bracket for the power steering and the AC sits on top of this and it kind of guides it into place and you got three bolts that hold it to hold it to the head and all that so in taking that out it came out fine with the whole pump but it wouldn't come out of the pump it was rusted in pretty good um, i guess that side was leaking so i hit it with the rubber mallet it didn't work then i hit it with the dead blow and it kind of worked and then i hit it with thor's hammer and i messed up the threads so, had to cut new threads for it. So, we'll see. I'm gonna put some pretty good sealing on it and make sure that we don't have an issue with leaking or anything like that. So, and if it does leak, take it apart, put this one bolt, go find this bolt and put it back in there. Um, so yeah, that's where we're at for tonight. Um, I'm waiting because we didn't get a gasket for the thermostat. If we would've got a gasket for the thermostat, the water pump and all that been on by now. Um, but we didn't get it. And everywhere is closed tomorrow for Thanksgiving, so I'm going to have to wait till Friday anyway. So um, come out here, get ahead of it, drain the oil, get ready for all that. So when everything comes in, it's boom, 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 boom. And then we're spending the next however long it takes to figure out how to do the rear end on the rear end. So hang tight. Give me a couple days when parts come in. We'll get throwing some stuff back on this truck. Okay, so it's been like four days 
since we started working on this, uh, came down with COVID right before Thanksgiving. So, great. Um, so, getting back to work today. I'm gonna crack open a cold one. And why do I need a 20 ounce? I got a lot of stuff to do on this one. I gotta get it out of here today. We've gotta start working on the rear end um, probably tomorrow. So, I need to get it back in uh, running condition. Need to do the, still do the spark plugs on this side. Need to add the spark plugs. Need to do the whole tune up kit with the cap rotor, wires, all that. Um, he ordered a new, whatever the hell that is. So, we're gonna throw that on too. And um, yeah, in the process right now, let's get this water pump on. So, the first thing I'm gonna do before we start doing this water pump is this secondary gasket because on the 302 here it's got a gasket that goes back to this this plate back here and then it's got a gasket that goes from the plate to the block this guy so what i'm going to do to make this easier on myself and kind of help hold it in place i'm going to just put a little bit of rtv to tack it up just so it'll stay in place for me along the bolt holes here and then we can put this on and it says to give it uh, it says to give it you know 24 hours of setup but since we're not actually doing any of the doing any of the bolt holes with it making a gasket with it then uh, I'm just using it to hold it on hold it in place I'm just gonna let it sit here for a minute I'm gonna set it down on its face so it'll have the weight of the water pump on top of it and uh let me finish bolting in the uh the thermostat housing here so all the parts came in and um throw that one I, gotta... I made something in there um i got all the parts in and uh we should be able to get all this done today he went and picked up the oil filter all that stuff yesterday. He didn't give me a gasket for the um, the water pump housing, so we had to get one of those as well. But now that this is on, this is all tight, ready to go. We're good on there. Um, while I'm waiting for that stuff to set up, I'm actually gonna do some plugs real quick. I'm gonna put these four plugs in so I can start chasing the wires back, take the cap off, all that stuff. So a little trick I do when I'm putting in spark plugs, um, a lot of people they'll use the socket they'll you know the spark plug socket comes with uh comes with the uh little rubber piece on the inside of it so you can hold the, the spark plug in it and get it threaded in and all that i don't do that i actually take the rubber piece out uh because what i'll do is i'll make sure i break it loose and i back it out a little bit and then i got this rubber hose well this nylon braided hose and I could get little tighter angles on it and all that stuff. So I'll loosen it up and then I'll put these in. Um, these are already pre-gapped. Um, I did check the gap yesterday when they came in. So everything's good there. But this way I can get up here and it's threaded. And you won't cross thread with this either because it'll just spin. If you have any tension, it'll just spin the, uh, spin the hose on the spark plug so you're not going to risk cross threading anything if you're doing it like that and i've been doing that for years and years and years and years i always take the rubber out of my spark plug sockets whenever i need to get new ones uh you know lose them whatever okay so let me show you what i mean about if you start to cross thread it with the tube it'll just stop you won't you won't, you won't risk it so you get the plug, slide that over the over the porcelain, and as you're turning, if it catches, the tube just spins. See, the Delco's not moving, see? So that's that's the way to do it right there. And this saved me a few times, especially doing the Hemi engine, because they're straight up and down in the cylinder. They're not coming in from the side like this, like a you know, the older Fords. Chevys, all that stuff. Um, even the LS's, they come in on the sides. The Hemi's come in on top of the head. 
like this. And there's a well about, you know, that deep that the, uh, the plugs are down in. And yeah, if you have your socket, you can pull it out or whatever. But when you get to the back of the firewall or the back of the, the cylinder head on driver's side and you're up against the firewall, you don't have room. So this, you can actually spin this at an angle and you can get it out. So that's really why I started using the hose was being a hemi owner and make it difficult. And actually back here it's working too because I'm right up against the firewall back here when it's 302. All right, let me get these tightened down. So here's what the plugs look like. He had iridiums in there and these things are fouled. All of them. So I'm probably going to have to check his uh, chingoletto over there. Where are all my little extensions? I haven't worked on this truck in like a day. Oh, right here. Damn hose. AC hose is in the way. Ah, every hose in the way in here. It's me hoses. Okay, all four are in on this side. Now, I'm gonna do, let me get the cap and the rotor real quick. Okay, here's our new cap, here's our new rotor. <clears throat> so, what I'm going to do is wonder why I can't take this stupid thing off to get it out of the way too, but here we are. More damn wires. God bless. What the hell? What are we on now? Oh. Okay, get this out of here. And the other thing I've been noticing too, is I told him not to bring me this truck with critters in it, parked in a field. I've killed four red wasps walking around on the ground because it's been chilly, so they're, they're not flying, but they've been walking and they're, uh, they're encroaching on my space here and I don't like it. And we got a new one of these, so we're going to go ahead and take this off too. Just Yep. Look at it. Look at all the room we got now. Why is it? I better get that. My bad. Put this over here. Airplane. Let's try to clean this truck up. I got things laying all over the place. Here's what it is. Now I'm gonna do these one at a time. I'm gonna bring it back over here, and I'm gonna get my my rotor set up, my new rotor, so I know where everything goes. So obviously, we know the master. So we'll just take this guy out. We know him. So we'll get that one ready, and the first one here is gonna be number five. So let's get number five out. matched up okay so we got our master and we got our number five right here same length didn't measure it up but that's the master okay so we can that one go ahead and put this guy on just hang it over here so I know where it goes so that's our new one. There's number five. Now I need to see the orientation of this guy. So it's like this. So that means nothing to me. Okay, so I'm just gonna label this one number five right here. So this one's gonna be five. Okay, so that's our starting point. So we can do this guy. Because if I can tell you if there's anything I'm not looking forward to, is having to retime this stupid thing. So I'm going to try to get this as close as I can from the jump. So, okay, there's that one. Now we're going to follow back to number six, which is this guy right here. I believe. See? Yeah. Okay, so that one, let's 
to match it up. Found it. So this is number six. Let's write that on there. Oop, wrong one. Just gonna throw this guy on here. Hopefully without taking the number off. Partially coming off. There we go. Now all the way off. Okay, maybe I should, you know, label them after I put them on there. That'd probably be what a smart guy would do. Okay, there's number six. Now we need to go back here and find the next one, which is going to be this guy. No. Let's see. Another spark plug holder. You really want to make sure that you don't lose these stupid things, huh? Okay, so let's not lose that guy. It's this one here. Okay. Got him. There's that one. Double check, number seven, there we go. Okay, get this one off. Match it up. So here's number seven. So this one's gonna be on this guy. Number eight, it's got the isolator in there. And there goes the motor. Well, we're gonna go with this one because <coughs> makes sense. If we put our cap in rotation, we're looking at skip one, number eight goes right here. And I'm probably doing this way back asswards, but I don't I don't mess with forwards, man. I don't know the I don't know the the firing order on this engine. So this is the way we're gonna do it. And it may take a little bit more time, but that's fine. Make sure that we don't mess it up, because one, it's not my truck, and two, I need this one out of the shop today. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this cap off, even though we still got some connected to it. We haven't got to those yet, but that should be relatively easy. So we're gonna just swing this guy over here. I'm gonna undo this rotor, and I'm gonna leave it exactly where it's pointed, and it should, let me see. This doesn't look the same at all. So that's good. Let's see. Oh, here we go. I just got this guy in there. We don't have the we don't have this type in there. Sure. Okay. Well. Move that guy out. And all we have to do is replace this cat right here. And it goes one way. So this guy out. Huh. Hmm. It's supposed to just come right up, but clearly it ain't gonna. Why are you being this way? Come up. There we go. Got it. Okay. Yeah, this guy's this guy's pretty rusty. It's not making good contact, so let's see. Yeah. So that one can go there. So we got this new one and we're gonna put a dot of grease right there on the top of the contactor. Alright, slide this guy back on. Goodness, what is the issue here? This thing's tight. We'll clean this up just a little. Okay, here, there we go. Okay, all right, so we got the new one on. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put this new cap on 
and we have our we have our wires on there so get Medusa point in the right direction here and I can rerun these where they go and all that and once we start taking off the other the other goodies uh, we can get it get it marked up and put where they go for the next piece so come on that's why this is here is cutting them federal yeah you're seated why aren't you getting on there Ah, oh, mighty. Can't get that one on there. There we go. Okay. All right. So the new cap's on, the new rotor's on. Got four plugs on this side done. Just got to do these four. But before I jump around and do any of that, I'm real good at bouncing around. So before I do any of that, I'm gonna get this water pump on so we can get that out of the way so we can get this bracket back where it goes and do all that. Okay, I think we're finally tacked up enough on that gasket. We're gonna try to get the uh we're gonna try to get the water pump started, threaded, all that. Um let me get I got the thread sealer here to get this guy. This is the guy I'm worried about. Um the other night when we took it off, remember it got stuck in the uh, it got stuck in the old water pump because it was so rusted. So uh, apparently when we moved, uh, the tap and dies did not make it. Uh, so I had to run across the street, go see my neighbor Jody, and uh, see if he had a a tap and die that I could or a die that I could borrow. So. We got it, uh, we got matched up with another one, found the correct threads, ended up cutting whole new threads on this thing. So I'm a little worried about this one, but that's why I'm putting a heavy amount of thread sealer on here. Um, so hopefully this one will hold up and it won't leak. So I gotta get this out of the way. Ah, go over here. Just get out of my way. I need to go right where you're at. So let's see. I'm actually gonna get the first one started. This guy. It's a through bolt. It's not a it's not in the water jacket or anything like that. So I'm gonna get this one started to hold it in place so I can get the other one on there and get some stuff moved out of the way here. Um, this guy right here. Get this one out of the way. Momentarily. And that guy holds that thing, stuff, all that. So, put that down there. What the hell is this? Oh, I know what that guy's for. Okay. Well, I know there's a torque sequence and all that, but that's for right now. I'm just worried about getting this thing lined up. So it doesn't fight me the whole way when I'm trying to get it uh, buttoned up. So I'm just going to get these snug. Okay. The book said 12 to uh, 18 foot pounds for the water pump bolts. So I'm going to do 16. We'll call it good at 16. And uh, We'll get those torqued up here in a minute. There's no sequence, so I'm just going to do the cross pattern just to get make sure that you know uh, that it doesn't go heavy on one side. Now let me get my torque wrench, and then we can torque this guy down. Okay, just go check them all. That's on. Now we gotta get these big old honking things back in here because they're blocking 
Right now, the way the bracket is sitting, you actually got the, uh, the power steering pump sitting right where the outlet for the, uh, the lower hose is. So, slide these back in here. Get this back where it goes. Like that. Get that started. All right. Got one. And we got three of these big old things. So, and these just go in the head, so I don't need to do any thread block or anything like that in these. You just hold up the bracket. Okay, got that one in. And then this last one right here should be ready to go home. Right there. Okay. Okay, so all those are in. And just to be sure that we don't have any issues, put them on the mini bar. Give a couple more little turns out, we'll get tight. Okay, so those are good. That's not coming off. All right, so then we're going to get the sensor. We're gonna get that back where it goes. And plug that in and then get those get those nuts back on there. Hold that in place. If you remember correctly, this was a pain trying to get it out the first time. You can only imagine it's gonna be a blast getting it back in. So I gotta move that pulley to get my big old notebooks in there. Put this down from here so I can see where I'm working. And I got my two nuts. We're gonna go on. Get this hung back up here. And these aren't weight bearing or anything, they're just holding the bracket on. It's keeping that keeping that line out of the way for the sensor that we just plugged in, so nothing extraordinary. Okay. Make sure the tights don't come off. Okay, there's that. I got this hose here. I'm just going to slide that guy back on. The heater hose and this bolt goes here, which I'm certain is this one. The one I said, wonder what that bolt's for. This looks to be that bolt. You know, they make a tool specifically for these stupid clamps, but I don't have it. To be honest with you, probably ain't gonna get one. Where in the world are all my other pliers? I don't know. The shop is a mess from a couple other things I've been working on in between the junkers page. I'm gonna do this. I hate these clamps. And with the passion. Bypass hose. This guy. What the hell was that? I just launched something the Kingdom Come was stepping on, so that's cool. I need this clamp from this guy. Yep. Yep. here give you a little trick you 
spit on it if you make it on there and not all over you everything else should go on relatively easy like so and this guy might suck a little bit trying to get it where it needs to go but because that is a hard 90 Theoretically, I would have liked to put this on beforehand, but you need to cut the fit, so. And I didn't have the other one, because the other one I had to cut in half to get it off, because it was stuck. They were married. Go to your home. Go to your home. Like it's on. But it's not feeling. Door trick. Yeah, get a little spin on it. Get it back angled again. Hey, would you? Would you look at that? Would you look at? That one on wouldn't hurt if I could twist this dude just a little bit. I gotta be real careful because I don't want to puncture the hose. There we go. There we go. Perfect. Now it doesn't have a kink in it like it did just a second ago. So we got that bypass hose on here now. Tighten these down. Okay. You want to make sure you get those tight. Because if you don't, and they start to leak, you have to take all this stuff back off just to tighten them up. Get them snug. And then, like, one more. Those are done. Now, got we're gonna put the pulley back on so we can do pulley things I'll line that up with the holes right there like that and then we're gonna put the radiator in Remember, we got a new radiator, so this one's going to be a little bit bigger. I'm going to get the front of the truck cleaned up real quick, and then we'll get that radiator and pop it in there. All right. There's the new one. So. Let's get her dropped in place. Do this without breaking any of the fins or crushing them or anything like that. This thing is full of aluminum so it doesn't weigh anything. I'm just going to get it down where she lives. This general area. Make sure we end up with our mounting holes. And I think that's, I think that's it. She looks good. Let's see, let's get uh, oh. <clears throat> Hmm, so I might write. This one lines up. Yep. This one lines up. This one don't. That's one. Okay. Make sure that's out of the way. Everything else. Okay. 
There we go. Now we're golden like a shower. Perfect. Then we just got the transmission cooler lines we gotta put in. I'm really hoping that fan's gonna fit. But if it don't fit, and he didn't think about that, then that's fine. We'll just go get some electric fans and throw them on here and wire in the switch. Do all that. Okay. Transmission cooler lines in. Okay. So, next, we gotta do. We're gonna see if this fan's gonna fit. Let me see. Yeah, we're gonna be fine. We're gonna get a lot more cooling with this radiator, with the new water pump, new thermostat, new everything on the cooling system, just about. We're in pretty good shape. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put the belt on next. But what I'm gonna do for the time being is I'm going to take some of these uh, fan bolts I'm going to take two of them and I'm just going to thread them in a couple one one at three o'clock, one at nine o'clock if you're doing this it might be one at two o'clock and one at seven o'clock I don't know but mine is lined up right now at twelve, three, six, and nine so I'm going to go ahead and get the new belt I'm going to put that on there quick so I can get all that so I'm not trying to do it around the fan when I'm done. Comes this way, that guy, and then of course I don't have my damn breaker bar. There we go. And I do say, that looks pretty dang good. There we go. Got the belt on. Fully ready for the fan. Remember, tightening that fan on here is going to be a chore because <sighs> we got to do it with the shroud on. I might actually save that shroud and fan. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to save the shroud and fan for last. I don't want to. I don't want to mess with it. I still got stuff to do over here. I could use the extra room, but we can go ahead and get. I can get the lower hose in, so we can get that rocking and rolling, get that tightened on there. And then I'm going to mess with these spark plug wires and get everything lined up over here where it goes. And then we got to start taking these out. So, yes. Okay, so we got the lower, got the lower hose. And I was just sitting here looking, uh, trying to mock this up. And the one thing I didn't think about, that he didn't think about, I should have checked the depth on that. See how it goes, cause uh, it's uh, it's a thicker radiator, so this may not fit. But I'm gonna try. I'm gonna give it hell without trying to bend up these these fins here. It was a brand new one we just got. Oh come on! Uh oh, I already bent three. Where's my stool? I'm gonna have to get up in there with it. Let's see. I don't know if I can the inside of this rubber hose. So just give it a nice little spritz of something slick. Go ahead and ready. That one's on, on the pump. Now, reroute this guy here. Which way is my bend? I think it's because I'm dumb. I think I put it on upside down. And you go this way. This is the way. So I try it that way. Again, go spritz, spritz, spritz. 
Okay, let's try this way. Put you over here. Much easier. There we go. Gotcha. What was that? All right. Lower is on. I just put it on backwards. No big deal. I'm ready to put these on there with no room. Now this one's gonna be terrible because the transmission lines are in the way. So this is why you could use one of those tools which would be super handy right now because I don't want to undo these transmission lines. So if you have that tool what it does it's got two little pinchers and a pistol grip and a long cable so you put those pinchers on there squeeze the pistol grip latches them shut and then you just push it back and let go of the pistol grip and you're done but why would i do that that's too easy i'm gonna have to undo at least this lower the top one i think i can finagle but this one is a hard u right next to the clamp so the other one's a straight so i think i got plenty of room i lied i'm gonna have to do both of them yeah dog Okay, those are loose. All that for this valiant effort I'm about to make here to get this stupid clamp on here. Valiant attempt number two. Oh. Attempt number three. Mint. So that's back on. Now we can put the transmission cooler lines back on again. See, they go on super nice. God, they suck to get out. Lower one's on. Upper is in root. Upper is on. All right, so those are good. Uh, I need to find his coolant cap. I think it's under the truck, like everything else. There she blows. Really should get a new cap, but eh, if it goes, it goes. He can change this. I ain't too worried about it. Okay, use so that. There's nothing in the system yet. You gotta remember that. Okay, and we're leaving that off. So I can start messing with these. I'm gonna take a corn nut break. I'll be right back.